so I'll just quickly walk through this and I will do it quickly because I think most of you have been able to do it. So, so first of all, I need to get on one of the Sci servers on Jasmine. I went for Sci5. If you've done the um, earlier in Jasmine in introductory workshop, then you'll know about the different Sci servers and you see as you log in, it tells you information about the resource available on each of them. Um, so we want to then load Jaspi and Jaspi is our um, core environment that holds a whole heap of, of open source packages that lots of people are using on Jasmine. So the idea is that we get as many of them as we can into a single environment. And hopefully that means that most of you don't need to install anything to get running. So having done that, if I type Python now, the Python that I'm running is Python 3.7.9. So that's the Python installed in Jaspi. Um, and we can see here that if I um, import something like the NetCDF library, that's already there. So I can run this command. So I'm, I'm running Python minus M, which means use this module, the VM module, which is short for virtual M. And I'm telling it I want I want it to build a virtual environment in this location in my home directory, and I want it to use system site packages. So that means I want it to keep all the packages that are already installed in the Jaspi environment. So they're all made available through my virtual environment. So it takes a few seconds to go away and build that. And um, we can see it's now created that. So it's created its own bin directory, include lib, lib64, um, pointing to lib. And but a lot of these also connect through to the, the Jaspi environment where all the other packages are installed. One really important thing is that once you've created a virtual environment, you only need to do it once, but each time you want to use it, you need to do this um, sourcing of the activate script. And you can either type just dot um, or you can type source and then the location of the activate script. And so now we've done that, it usefully changes our prompt here to tell us that we're inside this particular virtual environment. And if I ask it which Python I'm running in, it's now pointing to my local virtual environment Python. So that's handy. Let me just move this up slightly. And so now having activated that, I can use this um, package installation tool called pip, um, which many of you will be use, um, used to when you're working with Python. And in this case, we wanted to just pick a really, really simple package, this thing called FixNC. So somebody out there in the community has written this as a tool for being able to modify the content in NetCDF files. Um, the reason I chose it was that it doesn't have a lot of dependencies, so it should install very quickly and it should install into the virtual environment. Those of you that have, have never seen Python minus C before, Python minus C is just a way of running some Python on the command line. So you don't actually create a Python shell. Um, so if I just put in here, print hello, it just, it just executes this small bit of Python. And so in this case, I wanted to import fixNC to check that it's there and then say something about it. So this would be the same as me just doing it here. So it imports, which means it has installed properly. And I can just have a look at some of the top level objects within FixNC. So it has this thing called a data set and it has an NC file, etc. So I'm happy that that's worked. And if I want to deactivate my environment at any point, if I maybe want to go back to just using Jaspi or, or activate a different environment, I just type deactivate. And now if I say which Python, we can see it's now pointing back to the main Python in the Jaspi environment. The last thing I did on here was um, I, 
I always get confused because I work on lots of different projects and I, I have lots of different Python environments and general software environments. So I like to set these little setup scripts um, in place so that I can, and these are sort of two lines to, to generate a setup script. So the first one is just modulo Jaspi, which is the first thing we needed to do. And the second one was the source activate. And now I've got that in place. If I left the VM and I came back into it and I wanted to get started, I've now got this setup script here. You can just have a quick look at it and I can just do source tilde setup workshop env and it does whatever things I tell it to in that script. So I could also change directory in there to a working directory and things like that. But I, I find these really useful as a, just a single line way of activating my environment. Um, one of you asked questions about if you're running, um, you want to activate a virtual environment on Lotus. Again, I find this setup script a really good way to do it. So I might, if I wanted to run a Python script on Lotus um, on the batch cluster, I might write a very small bash wrapper script. And the first thing it does is call source setup workshop m for whatever environment I'm working with. And then the second line would be Python and then the, the location of my script and any arguments I needed to send to it. So it's, it's just a really useful way of keeping track of your different environments. So if we just come back to think about what we've been talking about here. So we've been talking about activating the default Jaspi environment, creating a Python 3 virtual environment or VM. Um, we've looked at how to install packages and how to create a reusable setup script there. Um, some other things that you might want to do, you might want to share your environment with other people. Um, and there are different ways you can do this. Um, one key thing to know is that some of our file systems are not built particularly well for, um, for small files. So for example, our, our SOF or scale out file system, which you'll find in these kind of paths, um, these, are not, these don't perform particularly well with lots of small files. So we don't recommend putting software environments into these big group workspaces. Um, what you can do is you can put group workspace, sorry, your environments in your home directory, but if you needed to share them with other people, you could actually ask for what they call a small files group workspace, such as a, something beginning with GWS slash SMF. Um, and they, they use the kind of file systems that are optimized for small files. And particularly the latter, these small files group workspaces are really useful for um, sharing within a, a certain project or a certain community where you all want to access the same environment. And typically, again, you'd create something like this one line setup script and just say to someone else, oh, if you want to use this environment, you just run the source and then the location of your setup script and it does whatever steps it needs to do. Um, just, just a pointer here that all users with access to a group workspace can, can access any environment that you, you put in those. And there's details about sharing software environments at this help page. Um, there's a couple of points here. One of them is, um, in some cases, you might just want us to add to the Jaspi environment. So you might want to add a common software package that, that many of you want to use or a whole project wants to use. And there are details on our help pages of how you can request updates to Jaspi. Um, obviously, we, we can't react too quickly to those because we're changing the entire system from time to time. Um, but we do our best to, to keep expanding the number of packages installed there. And another thing to point out is that when we created the virtual environment, we used this minus minus system site packages option. Now this means that it inherits all the additional packages of the packages that have been installed um, into the, the base environment. So in this case, our base environment was Jaspi 
and it has things like NetCDF4 and Iris and X-Array and Pandas and these kind of things installed. Um, by including system site packages, we are telling the virtual environment to also be able to see these. If you don't have a requirement to do that, you can omit this extra argument and just create a virtual environment, which is essentially just a plain Python 3 environment with all the, the standard libraries, but with no extra packages. And just to come down to the, the questions that were discussed, um, really, really all I'm doing here is pointing to some help pages. Um, but if you want to find out what packages are available inside our Jaspi environments, um, we have help pages that, that list the current and previous environments. And sometimes if we have a new environment that's planned, we'll have a test version available. And you can follow the links through to see a, a list of all the packages that are installed within that. And some of you will also be interested in using Conda or Miniconda as your way of installing environments. Um, now these are completely independent of Jaspi. You can't kind of merge them in with Jaspi in the way that we've done in this example. Um, but there are instructions here for creating a basic um, environment with Miniconda. Um, and then again, you can install lots of different packages using Conda as your packaging tool instead of PIP. Um, and we have an explanation of, of why you might want to use Miniconda as, a as opposed to other options. Um, it really is, it comes down to your specific requirement and who you're sharing code with and perhaps whether you need an environment to be identical to one that you have on another platform. Um, they're all different things that, that might affect your decision. So I'll, I'll stop talking there and just op open things up to any questions if people have any questions. I might not be able to see if you're raising your hand.